Starship is ready for orbital flight action. However, there is one more prototype that was meant to go suborbital, but with the recent push for the orbital test, it is kinda getting forgotten. We are talking about SN16. Starship SN16 was fully stacked even before SN15's successful flight test, and it's been more than a month since then, and SN16 is still waiting for its chance to fly. Ever since SpaceX landed Starship SN15, Almost all the development at Starbase has been around Starship's orbital flight test. And looking at the potential test campaigns, it looks like SN16 might just never fly. For those who don't know yet, SpaceX has already scrapped Starship SN17. And this is not the first time that SpaceX is skipping a few prototypes just because the rate of development has already made them obsolete. In the past, Starship SN12, 13 and 14 were all scrapped because SpaceX had already completed major design improvements for SN15. And it's important to note that almost all the parts for SN12 were manufactured and stacking operations too were underway. Another example is Super Heavy BN1. Back in March this year, SpaceX completed the process of stacking Super Heavy Booster No. 1, creating what amounted to be the largest rocket booster ever assembled. Plans and designs however changed quickly during the several month process, leading SpaceX to just write off the first completed booster as Pathfinder and scrapping it even before completing a single test. As a result, BN1 never made it to the test facilities and was ultimately cut into pieces days later. So it's clear that SpaceX isn't afraid of scrapping full-scale prototypes. However, SN16 is kinda in a weird position. On one hand, SpaceX doesn't seem to be a lot interested in suborbital flights. But on the other hand, flying SN16 for higher altitudes like 20 km won't be a bad idea. I've already talked about the advantages of higher altitude flight test in a previous video, but just to summarize it, there are two important benefits of higher altitude flight test for Starship. First of all, SpaceX could get more real life data about the structural stresses that Starship might encounter during the orbital flight test. And secondly, SpaceX could test the newly upgraded Raptor engines to some extreme limits. With the higher altitude flights, the time interval between their engine shutdown and relight will also be higher. This might allow SpaceX to get some more flight data on the improved Raptors. So there are some benefits of flying SN16, but they might not be lucrative enough for SpaceX to devote two weeks or more for prototypes test campaign. Probably directly jumping into the orbital flight test might be the best option for SpaceX as they can start testing starships under orbital flight conditions. So the probability of SN16 flying is quite low, but it's not completely zero until we hear something from either SpaceX or Elon Musk. Moving on, another crucial part for Starship's architecture is the first stage, the Super Heavy Booster. About 10 weeks after completing BN1, SpaceX is well into the process of stacking the first flight-worthy Super Heavy Booster and has officially delivered the first booster hardware to the launch site for some crucial qualification tests. While only a test tank, BN2.1's arrival at the test facility is a great sign that SpaceX has finally settled on some sort of firm design for Starship's first stage booster. Thanks to the fact that Starship and Super Heavy are built out of the same exact steel rings with almost identical production hardware, all the past test tanks and even the full-scale Starships have indirectly helped improve the Super Heavy design. However, this does not mean that Super Heavy doesn't require any unique part and sections. Unlike Starship, which is designed to ultimately have 6 Raptor engines, the first orbital Super Heavy prototype will have 29 Raptor engines, and the plan is to increase it to 32 in the near future. With this massive number of engines, the Super Heavy booster will have to withstand almost 5 times more mechanical stress than Starship. This alone necessitates a drastically different thrust perk design, as well as additional structural elements in order to support the 29 engines that will be mounted on the interior of the skirt section. BN2.1 is never going to fly, at least not intentionally. Creating small test tanks has been a go-to approach for SpaceX in order to validate any new hardware. This approach eliminates the risk of catastrophic pad damages, which you might know has happened in the past. While testing, these test articles are filled with non-explosive liquid nitrogen and are mechanically stressed with hydraulic rams in order to simulate thrust from actual engines. Thus far, this process has seemingly been successful time and time again for SpaceX and it has helped them qualify new steel alloys, thinner skins, new welding techniques, and even new thrust perk designs for Starship. Whether or not BN2.1 is successful, it is safe to assume that SpaceX will put the first flight-worthy Super Heavy booster through some similar stress test before attempting any wet dress rehearsals or static fires. 
It is quite possible that we won't see any flight action at Starbase for quite some time as SpaceX gets ready for the orbital flight. There is still a small possibility of SN16 flying, but there is no clear timeline as to when this might happen. What do you think? Will Starship SN16 fly for a suborbital flight? Let me know in the comment section. If you like the content, do consider subscribing the channel. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.